Hello and welcome to the Wargamer and another Horus Heresy painting tutorial. In this video I'll be showing you how to paint your Blood Angels in their Heresy era colours and I'll be using the Citadel range of paints to do so. So here we have the Space Marine that I'll be painting as part of this tutorial and as you can see I've part assembled this. I've kept the arms separate as you can see here and this makes painting into these uh, recesses under the arms that much easier. Now I've also primed it using a grey primer. This is because I find it's a lot better for bright colours such as red when you build them up over a grey primer. The first task in painting this miniature is to paint all of the red armour. First of all, we'll be applying a base coat of Mephiston Red, followed by a wash of Carabao Crimson, before highlighting with Evil Sun Scarlet, and then applying a second highlight of Fire Dragon Bright. For this first step, I've mixed in roughly one part water to two parts Mephiston Red, just to improve the flow of the mixture, and I'm going to be applying this over the entirety of the armour. You can see here, by uh, reducing the thickness of the paint using the water, it applies much more easily over the surface and what we can do is once this is dried we can apply a second coat if necessary and that gives a really nice and even coverage to start off with. With the initial base coat completed we're now going to be applying the Carabao Crimson wash over the armour and I've mixed in roughly or equal parts Carabao Crimson to water here just to improve the flow, I don't want it to be too strong a wash. I just want to make sure that it pools nicely into all of these recesses and uh, applies a little bit of shading into there as well. And this will really bring out the details uh, but ahead of time, ahead of doing the uh, highlights in the next few steps. So using the Evil Sun Scarlet, which is going to be highlighting the edges here, and one of the techniques you can use is by holding the brush perpendicular to the edge you wish to highlight and very carefully dragging it along the surface, like so, which creates a very thin highlight of a line there. Now I've mixed in roughly um, one part water to two parts Evil Sun Scarlet just gives me a much better flow for highlighting these edges and as you can see here it just applies really nicely along the edge. Now that all the edges have been highlighted the next step is to pick out the corners with our Fire Dragon Bright and just a small amount on the brush here just dabbing it onto these upper corners of the plates. Let's just really enhance the highlights as well. We want to focus it mainly on areas where you'd expect the light to be hitting from up above. So for example along the collar here going to be hitting this this edge along there and the same on the other side. Now we're doing this across the miniature wherever we have one of these hard corners. The next step in painting this miniature is to paint all of the black areas. This includes the harness straps, also the sections in between the armor plates. We're also going to be painting the uh, shoulder pad trim and also the weapon stock, so this is both the bolter and also the chain sword as well. Starting off with a base coat of a bad and black, followed by a highlight of Eschen Grey, before applying a final highlight of Dawnstone. So the first step is to apply the Abaddon Black base coat. And Abaddon Black is a base colour, which means it will cover over these grey primed areas really nicely. But just be very careful when doing so. You don't want to overspill onto the red areas, especially when you're painting the sections in between the legs here. Do use a very slight brush. If you do overspill, you can always repaint over the top using the exact same techniques that we used in the previous steps. I would recommend mixing in a small amount of water here as well, roughly uh, one part water to two parts of bad and black, and if you're using a wet palette you shouldn't need to either, as the paint will already be thinned out. And we just want to make sure we apply the black carefully over all the areas on the miniature that we intend to paint black. So after applying the base coat we now want to highlight the edges using Eschen Grey, and going to be dragging the brush perpendicular to these edges here, very lightly dragging the brush along and this will create this nice little quite small grey highlight just along the edges there. With the first highlight completed, the next step is to perform a second highlight over the black areas. This time we'll be using Dawnstone in a similar fashion to the highlight that we performed with Fire Dragon Bright. We're just going to be picking out the very corners of the grey areas here, so just on the corners of the shoulder pads, and pretty much anywhere else where we've got a harsh corner like this, and we've got a black area as well. Now you can also, if you're feeling adventurous, you can actually pick out these individual rivets that are around the shoulder pad if you're using this particular shoulder pad as well. But just be very, very careful as you don't want to apply too much of the Dawnstone. With the black areas completed, the next step is to paint the skin. That is, of course, if you've got any bare flesh available on your miniature. And we're going to be starting off with a base coat of Bugman's Glow, followed by a mixture of Lamian Medium and Cadian Flesh Tone, before highlighting the features with Kislev Flesh, and then finally a wash of Reikland Flesh Shade. For the first step, I've created a roughly one-to-one -one mix of a Bugman's Glow and water, and I'm just going to be applying this over the skin here just to make a nice and even base layer that we can build up from in later steps. And the reason why I've mixed in the water is it wants to get a really 
thin layer just on the miniature. We want to get a nice even coverage but without applying too much paint. So once this layer is dried we're going to be applying a second layer over the top and this will give us the best surface possible. Over the Bugman's Glow one, they'll be applying a one-to-one -one mix of Acadian Flesh Tone mixed with Lamium Median. And as you can see over the surface here, it will pull into the recesses and across the surfaces, but it will still have a slightly darker colour. You can just about see as it gets applied over the surface here. We just want to lighten the colour. We're not really too fussed about picking details out at this stage. We just want to create a nice blend between the two. With the Cadian Flesh Tone base coat completed, the next step is to pick out the details using the Kislev Flesh. And you can see here I'm just very lightly picking out the nose there, and I'll also be doing it across the brow, just with a small amount of Kislev Flesh on my brush. And again, I've just mixed in some water here. It just makes applying it that much easier. And if you do apply it, it's not going to be uh, on the miniature quite as heavily as if it didn't have water mixed in. So you just want to pick out the details here. It's not don't worry too much if you do apply it too heavily because the next step will fix that. To finish off painting the skin, I'll now be applying the wash of Reichland Flesh Shade just over the surface here. Now, I didn't want to apply it too thickly as I don't want to darken the skin too much, so I mixed in roughly equal quantities of Reichland Flesh Shade to water, and as you can see, as it applies over the surface, it pulls into these recesses and really brings out the definition in these facial features. The next step in painting our miniature is to paint any hair and also any fabric you may have in a miniature, such as this uh, weapon holster that we have here. I'll be starting off with a base coat of Rakar Flesh, followed by a wash of Seraphim Sepia before applying a layer of Ushabti Bone and then highlighting finally with White Scar. I'll be starting off with a base coat of Rakar Flesh and be applying this over the entirety of any holsters or pouches you may have on the miniature and the reason why I've gone for a cloth or a very pale leather effect is it contrasts really nicely against the bright red colour of the armour. Now I've mixed in just a small amount of water here, again if you're using a wet palette you shouldn't need to, but it just thins it down enough to make applying this a lot easier and if you apply two thin coats as opposed to one thick coat it'll give you a really nice and even finish. So using the Seraphim CPR I'll be washing over the hair and also the fabric as well and this will give it a really nice deep rich tone and it'll pull into all these recesses really bringing out the detail especially in the hair here but you're doing the exact same when we apply it over the fabric as well making sure we get it into all of these crevices here. For the next step I'll be using the Ushabti Bone mixed with Lamian Medium and I'll be applying this over the edges mainly but also in some of these central sections as well. Now I've mixed it in roughly one part Lamian Medium to two parts Ushabti Bone and the reason why I haven't gone for a one-to-one -one mix is because I don't want it to be too thin, I don't want it to be too runny, I just want it to be quite a thick highlight essentially along these edges here. And this will just really simulate the fabric having folds and shadowing like so. And similarly for when you're actually highlighting the hair, we just want to pick out some of the individual strands with the Ushabti bone like so. And just really enhance that fair blonde look that we're going for. The final step in painting the cloth and also the hair is to apply a very, very fine highlight of white scar. I'll just be applying it to the tips here, just of the fabric, just in the very corner. In a similar way to how we applied the Fire Dragon Bright and also the Dawnstone in previous steps. This is basically just to enhance some of the details. The same goes for the hair as well. We just want to apply some on the very tips of these strands at the front here as well. We don't want to apply too much. We don't want to make it too white. We just want to get a nice very slight highlight there. The next step in painting our Blood Angel is to paint all of the silver metallic areas. This includes the vents at the back there and also some of the actual weapons themselves. You can see here on the chain sword and also the, the remaining sections of the bolt pistol as well. And we're painting all of these areas, first of all, with lead belcher, followed by a wash of Nolan oil before highlighting finally with Stormhost Silver. Now when it comes to painting these metal areas, I would highly recommend using a thin brush as we don't want to overspill into areas that we've already painted as it can be quite difficult to paint over the metallic paints once they're applied. So just be very, very careful. Again, mix in this just a small amount of water unless you're using a wet palette, of course, and this will just improve the flow and give you a much better finish on the metal. The next step is to apply a wash of Nuln Oil over the areas that we painted in the previous step and this will just really give us some nice shading, especially in the recesses around these vents here. Just making sure that it pulls nicely into them and really brings out the definition. 
Now using the Stormhost Silver, once the Null Oil wash is dried, we're going to be picking out these edges here. This will really enhance these details, especially just along these corners, just very lightly dragging the brush along just to bring them out, as you can see there. And especially around areas where we've got grenades as well, I'm just going to carefully pick out the centre seam, just at the bottom, and then the pins as well. Now one of the final areas to complete in painting this miniature is to paint some of the gold detailing. This includes the, uh, the section just on the chest there, the panel on the back that we can see in the center there, and I'm also going to be painting one of the knee pads as well, but you can paint any additional adornments. We'll be starting off with a base coat of Retributor armor, followed by a wash of Agrax of the Shade before finally highlighting again with Stormhost Silver. Using the Retributor Armour, we'll get a really nice bright gold base layer in which to build up from. I'll be carefully applying this across the chest there. Be careful not to overspill onto the red or black areas here. Use a small brush if possible, and again, just mix in just a very small amount of water just to improve the flow. So as well as this section here, we'll also be painting uh, one of the knee pads. This, In this case, I'll be painting the right knee pad. Just very carefully again, just making sure I get a nice and even coverage across the surface. When the Retributor armor is dried, we will get a really nice base coat that we can now apply the wash of Agrax Earthshade over the top of. And as you can see here, it will really deepen the color of the gold, especially when we apply it over the chest symbol, the, the harness lock here. You can see it pulls into the recesses, really brings out those details. And the same for the panel that we've got here on the back as well. With the wash dried, the final step is to pick out the edges here with the Stormhost Silver and just be carefully dragging the brush along the surface again just to create a nice fine highlight along these edges here. And here we have the completed Blood Angel who you can see I've assembled and attached to the base. Now whilst I'm focused on a 30k Space Marine you could apply the exact same colours and techniques to modern day Blood Angels of course making some changes when it comes to painting the trim on the shoulder pads for example. If you enjoyed this tutorial please do let me know in the comments below and also hit the small eye in the corner of the screen here to vote on the next Legion you would like me to tackle in these tutorials. To be kept up to date with all the projects that I'm currently working on you can check out my Facebook and Instagram pages which you can find links to in the description below. And finally, if you'd like to support me in making more tutorials, you can do so by heading over to my Patreon page, which you can find a link to on the screen now and also in the description below. From there, you can donate to me from as little as a dollar a month, which will just really help me in producing future content. So until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.